Frances Lupai Ippolito is a writer, judge, and mom in Portland, Oregon. Her writing has appeared in Nightmare Magazine, Asian Ghost Stories, Chromophobia, Mother, Tales of Love and Terror, and Unquiet Spirits. Frances co-chairs the Young Willamette Writers Program, a free writing program for high school and middle school students. Frances, take it away. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, and then I also wanted to just mention that this year I, I did soft launch two uh, indie presses. One is nonprofit that's geared toward diverse voices as well as community storytelling through recording or oral histories. And also another one, which is listed here in Demagogue Press, which will be geared toward um, books, but also games. So board gaming and card games, because that's something that we really enjoy doing in my house. Okay, well, I'm going to start reading. Wherever Baba went, Spanker hung from his belt like a stiff limb that had grown on the outside of his clothes. Unlike the punishment paddle, we, Baba's daughters, had no names. He called us by our rank. I was Sichi, or number 17, among the adopted girls who lived on the farm estate. I don't remember my life before coming here. But I do remember Baba placing me into the toddler bed one night when I was four. He told me we lived in the hills of eastern Oregon. I still don't know where that really is, but it doesn't matter. Things are perfect here. Even so, my sisters whisper behind my back, Why does Baba only beat us? How did she get promoted again? Their jealousy used to irritate me. After all, it wasn't my fault they couldn't please him. The punishments have always been clear. One to thirty strikes for lying, thirty-one to fifty for indolence, and fifty or more for disobedience. I've told this much to the newest sister sitting across from me at the living room table. Baba left her in my care for the night. I've given her some of the rules, but saved the most important one. There's something else you mustn't do, 88. Worse than disobeying? The 14-year-old girl asked. She looked younger than her age, with gaunt cheeks that gave her an unnaturally sharp face. As I stared, she trembled, rattling her chair and scraping the wooden legs at the floor. Never forget mother. I pointed to the ancestral tablet on the mantel. 88 tilted her head and squinted at the bronze frame that bordered a rectangular inset of white jade. From our seats, I couldn't read the carved inscription of mother's name, although I knew it by heart. Tanhua, 88 whispered. You can read Chinese? Not many of the girls did when they first arrived. She bowed her head and stared into the table. Madame Yue taught us enough to recite poetry for the clients. I hid my expression behind a cradled teacup. At age 20, I'd spent years training with my sisters. We were all orphans once. Baba selected us from foster homes, wicker baskets left on doorsteps, and families that couldn't feed more than one mouth. But none of us came so late in age or from there, a brothel in some nearby town. Baba preferred to adopt the youngest, purest ones, in order to fully shape their minds and bodies, he told me years ago. What was she like? 88 asked when she finally raised her head, cheeks still mottled scarlet. I smoothed loose strands of my braided hair and straightened my posture before reciting as Baba had taught me. Mother was born in Taiwan. Our parents married many years ago, but Mother died before he could bring her to America. Oh, she must have been alluring and seductive. My face tightened. 88 spoke like a prostitute and smelled like one too. The artificial rose scent lifted off her tiny body in a dilating orbit and clung to my nostrils until the cloying sweetness overpowered the gentle jasmine of steep leaves. Ignoring her, I continued, There is a painting in Baba's private rooms. Only number one is allowed there. Baba says mother was intelligent, beautiful, and virtuous. He encourages us all to be like her. 88 glanced at the ancestral tablet, but her gaze soon roamed the outer room of my two-room living space, sweeping over the delicate peonies and cranes carved into mahogany wall paneling, and lingering to tally the expensive pear wood lamp stands, sandalwood armchairs, and camphor chests. I pretended to look away, 
to drink my cooling tea, but felt her eyes creep like hungry mice up the peach silks dripped across my body. I adjusted my collar, imagining how the cheap raw silk she wore must chafe. If I become like you, Baba will love me too, she announced. Her star face hardened into seriousness and her eyes narrowed into crescents. Bring me hot water in a bath bucket, I ordered 53, who was too busy stealing glances at 88 to properly balance the used teacups on the serving tray. The teapot slipped off the edge of the tray and clattered sideways onto the table. 88 shrieked and slapped at the hot stains spreading over her dress and a shadow of lengthening fingers. I tapped 53 on her cheek with my folded fan. That's an imported clay pot. I kept my voice even and let the tip of my fan droop to a relaxed angle toward 88. You wouldn't want to break Baba's newest piece, would you? I struck the fan against my palm, satisfied when 53 blanched at the rhythm of bamboo meeting skin. She grabbed the teapot and backed out of the room. The small bath bucket will do, I called after her. She was so clumsy and slow. No wonder she ranked so low even though she and I were the same age. The bath finally ready, I guided a bare 88 into the water. You'll live in the dorm, I said as I picked at her wet knots with a comb. Oh, she's not going there, Baba interrupted from the other side of the bathroom. His silhouette paused at the paper screen panel. Baba never knocked, but I was always listening for the tap-tap jingle that Spanker made when he was near. 88, however, startled and sloshed water out of the bathtub when her arms flew across her chest and her knees bent to tuck under her chin. I set the comb inside and greeted Baba outside the bathroom. He usually lowered his head for me to kiss his cheek. This time he didn't, and instead he stared at the exposed curve of 88's spine. Her nakedness revealed the child beneath the layers of painted doll. She was thin, but her skin glowed a perfect tan. Her thick hair fell like a curtain of spilled ink down her back, and in the la lamplight, black strands shone with the flashes of blue. Where shall I take her? I returned to my stool and continued to run the tor tortoiseshell comb through her hair. She'll stay with you, he answered and knelt beside the tub. 88 tensed away from him and shivered into a tighter ball, sinking into the shallow water. With me? Only the top ten sisters received servants. The others would be jealous I've been promoted again. You will personally accelerate her education, he ordered. Teach her? Not a promotion at all, a chore. My fingers pressed hard into the comb's car carved grooves, yanking at the glistening hair until 88 yelped and twisted free. I grabbed her head and pushed her back into position. Don't disappoint me, Baba said. Never, Baba, I answered at 88's body, rocked and her elbows banged against the sides of the bathtub. Thank you.